right. Hebrews chapter number 11, just for a few minutes. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. And the Bible said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For the sake of time, we'll look at verse 7. It says, By faith Noah. Verse 8 says, By faith Abraham. And then it goes on and talks about it in verse 20. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. In verse 21, By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. Verse 22, By faith Joseph. Verse 23, By faith Moses. And uh, verse number 30, uh, verse 29, By faith they passed through the Red Sea. By faith, verse 30, the walls of Jericho fell down. Verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. And it goes on down in, in the rest of the chapter, and it talks about those that are uh, not named, but who through faith, who through faith God worked in their life. Verse 39, the Bible said, all these, all of these, all of these that he has mentioned, all of these in the last few verses there that he mentions, but he puts no name on them, all of these, all these, he said, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And I, as, as you well know, and as you can tell in the reading of this chapter, this is the faith chapter. All these Old Testament saints, they, they accomplished what they accomplished because they had faith in God. They had faith in the Word of God and what God would say, what God wanted done. And, and it talks about now faith and through faith and by faith and in faith. All the way through this chapter, it talks about faith. And, and I want to talk to you tonight on the kind of faith that we need. The kind of faith that we need. And, uh, and I'm amazed, I'm amazed that these, uh, these, all these are named. And these are named, it just kind of, if you read this chapter, uh, Brother Jordan, you know what it does? It stirs you up. That their faith, what great faith they had in God, and what all they accomplished because of their faith. And then when you look at it another way, it just kind of it just kind of blows your mind all the things that God did do just because they had simply faith. Some of them never done anything except just believe God, and God would take their faith and accomplish something for Him. And uh, in fact, the Bible talks about if we have the faith of a grain of mustard seed. If I had a grain of mustard seed and had it in my hand, you probably couldn't even see it. Uh, it's so small. He said, if we just had a, the little faith of a grain of a mustard seed, we could move mountains. Amen? That don't mean literally mountains, but we could move. You ever heard somebody say, I've got a mountain in my life, obstacle in my life? Sometimes those can be moved when we put our faith and our trust in God. And so we need faith in these days. I, I recognize there's a lot of people has lost faith. Uh, they've lost faith in the church. A lot of people have lost faith in preachers. Uh, a lot of faith. A lot of people's even lost faith in God uh, through all the pandemic and all the things that took place. You'd be surprised how many people ain't been back to church yet. And my friend, they've lost that faith, and they put a question mark on God. And I'm gonna tell you what: God honors faith. Amen. And there's two kinds of faith. I'm gonna give you one right quick, and then I'm gonna preach on the last. And I thought about first of all their saving faith. Their saving faith. The Bible talks about in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans chapter number 3, uh, the Bible talks about in verse number 21 and verse number 28 through 28, he talks about, my friend, uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through redemption uh, that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation, what? Through faith in His blood. Romans chapter 5 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have 
peace with God. In Romans chapter number 10, very familiar chapter, it said the word is nigh thee, even thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're saved by faith. We're not saved by feelings. Amen. Somebody said, I don't feel saved. You don't have to feel saved. Amen. My friend, I've seen people get out of the altar and get saved, shout all of the ass. I've seen some people just stand up and you say, what happened to you? They said, they got saved. And you think, I don't know whether they got saved or not. They'd show no emotion. Think about Jimmy Manning. Jimmy Manning would come to our church. He bowed in the altar and he asked God to save him. He got up. I said, what? You know, they said, what happened to you, Brother Jimmy? He said, God saved me. That was it. That was it. And everybody thought, you know, here's a guy that's a drunkard. Here's a guy that's a big gambler. And all of a sudden, he just stands up and says, I'm saved. But you know what? He become one of the best Christians you ever seen. And he was one of the best workers in our church that we ever had. And witnesses still go and still witnessing. You know what? All he does was put his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, it's not by feelings. It's not by, somebody said, don't feel saved. You don't have to be saved. No, you don't have to feel saved to be saved. Amen. And then he talks about uh, it's not by emotions. Uh, I, we're not saved by emotions. <coughs> don't take me wrong. Don't take me wrong. I've, I've got a little throat trouble. I baptized the lady last Sunday. And when I walked out and the next morning, I got up and couldn't talk. And, uh, and I'm just now getting back. Kay's had a good week, amen. But uh, I just now got where I can talk a little bit back. But, but, uh, but you know, uh, emotions, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, don't take me wrong what I'm fixing to say, but a lot of these big movements that's going on, you know, these big horatorial meetings and everything, you know what happens? Emotions take place. Uh, emotions take over. And this group over here, they're moving. And so this group over here, they got to outdo them, so they move. Uh, and my friend, there's a lot of emotions going on, and preachers know how to work and and I'm not down on preachers but some preachers just know how to work on your emotions amen they know uh, there's some there's some fellas that just I can't I, I don't like the word brother Brian professional but some preachers are just professionals uh, in getting people to move uh, and my friend was in Florida one time and the guy got up preached and he's trying to get somebody to come to the altar and he, he said if you're lost come and nobody come if you're backslid come uh, if you need help come nobody wouldn't come and this is honest truth I'm sitting there he said if you love your mama said come to the altar right? and you know I thought well I love mom I'll go amen and so everybody came and I said that because sometimes people works on the emotion I tell you what you can have an emotional spirit and never be saved born again by the grace of God had a preacher had a preacher the lady came down I may have told you this the last time I was here but uh, the preacher this lady came down uh, and got saved and on the way down she's by herself just her and her son and she left her son sitting on, on the front seat just a little old boy sitting on the front seat and his, my, his mother got down the altar and she was lost and they led her to Christ and she got up and she said uh, the pastor said what happened and she said I trusted Christ and got saved you know what he done he went over there and while they were shaking hands and sat down with that little boy here's what he said, he said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, your mama's going to heaven. Don't you want to go to heaven with her? And you don't want to go to hell. Your mama's not going to go to hell. You know what? He worked on his emotions and he come down and got saved. I told somebody, I said, you know what? That boy may go to hell over that little old movement of emotion. But I think this thing, you can be emotionally stared and still go out of here and be lost without God. Amen. My friend, it's not in emotion. It's not in works. Somebody said, boy, you got to do this. You got to do that. I tell you, ain't got to do nothing. God done done it all at Calvary. Thank God he done accomplished it. All you got to do is receive it and accept it. It's far by grace, so you say, through faith. That ought to be self. It's a gift of God. Not a works. You couldn't do enough works to get to heaven anyway. Amen? And so, my friend, it's not, my friend, by works. It's not by emotions. It's not by feeling. But my friend, it's putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? My friend, in Mark chapter 5, he told the woman, issue of blood, thy faith have made thee whole. He told Brian Bartimaeus, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. So that's what we call saving faith. And I'm glad that I've been saved by faith. Amen. And thank God I'm not holding on, trying to endure to the end. I'm just not going and, and, and give everything to God. I'm just enjoying the trip. Amen. It's just kind of like flying an airplane. 
I don't like flying. I don't like flying at all. I, I flew out yonder in Montana and, and uh, they had a good seat first flight, second seat wasn't good, my friend, and I, I, I can't tell you that because it can't get on me, but, but uh, it wasn't good, and I was crammed over here against the window, and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I, I told that guy with me, I said, they crammed me over there uh, against that window, and this uh, big heavy lady and a big heavy man piled in there on my seat, and I couldn't move, and she's, she was sharing my seat with me. And I couldn't move. And by the time we got landed, I was wanting to bust her in the nose. I mean, I'm just sitting there, you know, wanting to get out of there. I don't like flying. I just don't like it. I like handling the steering wheel myself. But you know what? When you fly, you know what you do? You get in there, and you just sit down, and you buckle up, and you just sit back. And my friend, the pilot takes you, and you just sit back and enjoy the trip. But we know that's the way it is when you get saved. Thank God God puts you in the body of Christ, and the Holy Ghost, my friend, is leading us and directing us, and we can just live for God and enjoy the trip and know that we're saved forever, eternally. So they're saving faith. Amen? But now I'll talk to you tonight about living faith. There's living faith. The just, the Bible says four times in the Word of God. In Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse 34. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Here in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 38, it says the just shall live by faith. Now who is the just? It's those that saved. Those that have been born again. And so us that are saved, us that are born again, we are to live by faith faith. Amen? And so I would give you about uh, three or four kinds of faith that we need in this day. First of all, I would say we need the kind of faith that will keep us believing without, my friend, encouragement from others. <laughs> yeah. Amen? You know, there's some people, they, they go as long as they're getting a little encouragement. Amen? But you know what? We need the kind of faith where we get encouragement or not. We just go on and serve God. I ask you a question. Who would have to quit to get you to quit? If your husband quit, would you quit coming? If your wife quit, would you quit coming? If your parents quit, would you quit coming? If your youngins quit, would you quit coming? If your best friend quit, would you quit coming? We need the kind of faith, thank God, it don't matter who quits, who goes another direction, that we just make up our mind. That's what Joshua said. Joshua looked around that crowd. He said, I don't know what y'all going to do, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We need to kind that faith. It don't matter who quits. It don't matter who throws a towel. It don't matter who goes in another direction. That we got enough faith that we're just going to keep on and believe God and serve God without any encouragement from others. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on now, help me out. Uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes even preachers live on encouragement. <laughs> You got to encourage them, brag on them. If you don't, my friend, they can't preach a lick. Amen. And they get mad. And it's, uh, you know, I've seen them. I've seen happen, this happen. I, I was in a meeting one time. The fella, fella was in a camp meeting thing where different preachers preached. And, and this uh, uh, guy got up preaching. Man, he preached the house down. And Brother Josh was a holiday man and shouting him, you know. And another guy got up preaching. We was a sick in him home. And the third got up and preached. And he didn't have much. And nobody didn't say a word. We just turned and looked at him. He got all upset because we didn't encourage him. We didn't and say amen. Uh, my friend, I like you amens. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if you don't say amen, I'm just going to preach anyway. Amen. I'm just going to let her rip. I don't have to. I like them, but I don't have to have them. Amen. But we need that encouragement. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, At my first, all men forsook me. That's what he said. He said, all men forsook me. Uh, he, you know, he had those that followed him, those that was working with him, my friend. But all of a sudden, he says, all men. I mean, you tell, hey, I, I tell you what, it take a lot of faith to follow Paul. Amen. Paul went through prisons, and he went through, my friend, nights and days of deep and hungers and colds and fasting. And he come to a place, he said, all men. I looked around and needed some help. I looked around. Where's those that I won? Where's those? But he said, all men forsook me. But he said, nevertheless, uh, the Lord stood with me. Uh, I tell you what. As long as God's with me, I don't care why, friend, you're there or not. I like to have you. I like to have you on board. But if you're not on board, as long as He's there, I thank God I'm glad I can keep on going for God. Amen. Amen. We need that kind of faith. David, my friend, when he went and fought that giant, he got no encouragement. Right. Sure. They didn't say, Oh, David, you're good with that slingshot. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't say, David, boy, we're glad you're here. They didn't know about it. They said, Listen, have you seen this guy? Have you seen this guy? Can't you? Imagine? I don't know. After all, you know the story as good as I do. Can you imagine after David finally decided he'd fight him? And my friend, he gets his little slingshot, picks up him four, uh, five little stones, and heads down there. But some of them brothers, my look down there and said, "Poor old David." <laughs> and really, my uh, uh, the the giant 
was, ought to have been the one. Uh, the captain ought to have been the one that fought the giant. Saul, he was the head taller than everybody else. He wouldn't go. His brother wouldn't go. And they found one that would go. And guess what? He got no encouragement at all. Amen. <laughs> They'd been most of us, we'd have quit. If it had been most of us, but anybody got her back, and if we didn't have nobody got her back, we wouldn't went on our own. Amen. And I'll tell you what, David, by faith, David went down there. My friend, he old look, giant looked at him. He said, You, you, uh, what, what are you doing coming to me with that little old slingshot? You're just a lad. A lad. And boy, David looked at him and he said, You come with me, my friend, in sword. Uh, you come with me in spear. But I come in you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Uh, and thank God David went on without any encouragement from anybody else. He just went on and done what God said. And God honored that faith. Uh, and the giant was defeated. Amen. Think about, I think about Nehemiah when he went out to do that work. Nobody encouraged Nehemiah. In fact, they said, well, if a fox oil begins to fall, and they fought opposition. They said everything in the world toward him. Even, even the ones that was working with him got weary, was ready to quit. But you know what? Nehemiah said, neither told I any man what God had put in my heart. And my friend, without any encouragement from anybody else, Nehemiah just kept on expressing and kept on pushing. And my friend built a wall in 52 days. You know why? He accomplished that great work. He had faith when everybody else wanted to quit, when everybody else wanted to throw the towel in. He, by faith, kept on going and kept on believing God. And God honored his faith. And the wall stood tall in 52 days. I'm talking about the kind of faith we need without any encouragement from others. Amen. I think about, I think about, you know, I think about this. If, if, if you lost everything, if you lost everything you had, your house, you lost your car, you lost your job, you lost everything you had, and the only thing you had left was Jesus, would you be happy? <laughs> you say, preacher, there ain't nobody can be that way. What about John on the Isle of Atmos? <laughs> John lost everything. They throwed him out on the Isle of Patmos. Wasn't nobody out there. If you studied the Isle of Patmos, wasn't nobody out there. The only one on the whole island was old John. And my friend, I was thinking about that one day. I thought, man, that'd be rough. They throw out there on there and no people around. Nobody. Kindred gone. Friends gone. Everybody gone. And drops you out on the Isle of Patmos by yourself. But I'll tell you what, I read the next verse. And old John said, I was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. Amen. Out there by himself. He still got up and rejoiced in the Lord and wrote the book of Revelations. Why? is out there. I'll tell you what, my friend, you ought to be encouraged and have enough faith that if everybody else quits in your family, people quit in your church, that you got enough faith just to get up and keep on coming. Keep on reading and keep on praying and keep on serving God. I remember years ago, and I've told this uh, uh, probably a hundred times here, but I remember years ago down in home at the, in the mountains, uh, they had a little church and had a good church, and then it got it kind of lost people, and people moved out, and things, and it got down, brother Mike, to ten people, got down to ten people, and they couldn't barely pay the bills, and they couldn't hardly keep going, and finally those ten got together, and they said, "Why don't we just shut her down? Why don't we just close the door?" And it got but ten people, and we're struggling, and we just can't hardly make it. And said, "Why don't we just shut the doors?" And one old man uh, stood there, and he said, "No, I think we ought to keep going." He said, "Our church, uh, and Mother God's blessed this church." Uh, he said, "I got saved in this church, uh, and I don't want to see the doors closed." Uh, and nine of them walked out and said, "You can have it by yourself." Uh, and by, they said for several weeks and months, uh, uh, this old man go to church every Sunday morning every Sunday morning he'd get up get ready brother Mike just like just like he always had and he'd go up there at the church he wasn't no preacher but he said he'd go up there at the church he'd pray and have singing sing a song or two read some scripture and go to the house uh, week after week Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night he went to church by himself sang a song or two read some scripture have a prayer and go to the house uh, and boy they laughed at him they said I wonder how long he'll last uh, now one of these days he'll quit and he kept on going for months. They said he went to the house of God. God, I wonder what, if you came to church, wouldn't nobody else here but you? Would you go home? <laughs> or would you just go and have go ahead and have service? Amen. I know some preachers, they said, well, I had one preacher, he told me, he said, Brother Mike, uh, he's going to preach that morning. I preached that morning, going to preach that night. And he said, I had good crowds Sunday morning. He said, most of the folks are leaving. We won't have but five or six here tonight. If you want to go home, you want to go, uh, that's fine with us. 
I said, man, if I can't preach to five or six, I didn't need to be here this morning. And my friend, listen, my friend, and they said this guy kept coming, and he'd pray, sing, and my friend pay a little offering, and my friend uh, read some scripture and go to hell. And said after several months, said there's a man walked in, the little old young man walked in, and his wife had a couple of kids, and he walked in the service on Sunday morning, and the man went back there and shook his hand, told him who he was, and he said, what's your name? And the little young preacher said, I'm so-and-so, and said, I'm a preacher, and said, I'm a missionary, and said, I'm looking for an area some up here. I'm thinking about coming up here and try to start a church in this area. And said, the old man stuck his hand out and said, hello, pastor. Amen. And my friend, listen, he said, my friend, that old boy, that little old boy took that church, and next thing you know, is running a hundred people and begin to grow. You know why? That old man, by faith, without any courage from other, just kept on coming and keep on praying and kept on believing God. We need that kind of encouragement today. We need that kind of faith that we'll keep on going without any encouragement from others. Amen. They don't say something else. We need that kind of faith that keep us believing without any encouragement from God. Amen. It always gets quiet right here. <laughs> I know we quote that verse. Jesus said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you, but I'll be where you always in the world. <clears throat> and he's never left us since we got saved. But he ain't always encouraged us. <laughs> My wife said that when we got married 50 years ago. We, we said, you know, the death to us part. We meant that. We've been together 51 years, but we ain't always been on encouraging grounds. <laughs> there was a few days I wasn't getting no encouragement from her. There was a few days she wasn't getting no encouragement from me. But we was there. We was in the same house. We was together. But we just wasn't in that good fellowship. Amen. And you know what? There's times that God lets you walk alone. Amen. There's times, my friend, you don't get much encouragement from the Lord. I think about in the book of Matthew chapter 15, and the Bible said in Matthew chapter 15, talking about that little, uh, uh, I can't say it, what is it, Syrophoenician woman? Uh, she came, and you know what she said? She said, O Lord, thy son of David, my daughter, is grievously vexed with the devil, but he, God, answered her not a word. His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but the lost sheep of Israel, uh, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came to her and worshipped and said, Lord, help me. And he, but he answered and said, It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast to the dogs. And she said, True, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumb which the fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said, Oh, woman, great is thy faith. Uh, be it unto thee as it will. You know what? This lady, my friend, without any encouragement from God, God didn't even answer. Can you imagine? Hey, here's God. Here's Jesus, the great Savior. Here's Jesus that's available to all. And here comes this woman and falls out and begs him to help her son and he just keeps on walking. He don't even look her direction. He never says a word. He don't pay no attention. If that had been most of us, we'd have just quit. Right. Amen. <laughs> if that had been most of us, then he was talking to him. Amen. But you know what? She didn't quit. Uh, she right. began to cry. And he said, listen, I'm not coming. The disciples said, hey, this woman needs something. Uh, and you know what? The Bible said, she said, he answered her not a word. He said, I'm not sent for her. She's a Gentile. I'm not sent her uh, to the lost sheep of Israel. And I said, I'm not too. And you know what? He said, uh, the Lord, she said, don't the, don't the, the dogs uh, eat the crumbs? Uh, she said, Lord, he looked at her and said, great is thy faith. Right. You know what she did? <laughs> when she found that loophole, she hit it with all the faith she had. You know what? Sometimes we pray out to God and cry out to God and my friend, it seemed like heaven's brass. It seemed like God's not saying nothing. It seemed like God's new moving. And my friend, sometimes that happens in church services. Yeah. You ever come to church service? It seems dead in a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, Brother Doug can't preach. And, of course, he can always preach. But, you know, sometimes you preach and you just preach. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we all do that. You, sometimes we can fake it. We can push it aside. Nobody knows it except Kay. And we can, when we get in the trunk, she'll say, you didn't have it tonight. Amen. But you know, sometimes we're preaching, and that ain't never done Brother Doug that way. Amen. Uh, I mean, one time I thought I'd really done good. And I got in the truck, and I said, Boy, I, I enjoyed preaching this morning. She said, I've heard you do better. Amen. But, but anyway, yeah, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, that goes back without encouragement, without any encouragement from others. Amen. Just keep on going. But sometimes you preach, and it seems like you don't have it, and they can't sing. 
And it seemed like the singing's dead and the service is dead. It seemed like you don't get nothing. Uh, and my friend, it seemed like God don't come and meet with us. Uh, my friend, you know what? You don't go home and quit. You don't change church. Uh, but thank God you just go back and my friend pray and a little more and study a little more and you come back and my friend, you people on preach it. But you know what? Somewhere, have some of them dry services, somewhere a God of heaven will come back and show himself and manifest himself. Amen. Need that kind of faith. My friend, you know what? The Hebrew boys didn't get no faith, no, no encouragement from God. When they come along and said, hey, boys, if you're going to bow, you know, they played the music the first time, nobody, everybody bowed but them three boys. Somebody told on them. They came back before the king, and he said, listen, here's the way it is. And went all back to it. He said, if you want to bow, that's okay. And if you don't bow, you're going to be put in the fire furnace. God wasn't there. God didn't come down there and say, hey, boys, just go ahead and stand. He didn't say a word. In fact, they said, uh, uh, whose God is it that's able to save you? And then boys said, our God is. And God didn't echo from heaven and say, hey, boys, I'm with you. He didn't give them not one word of encouragement. It wasn't until they got in the fire that God showed up. <laughs> God didn't encourage them. God didn't go and say, stand. God didn't, my friend, say, okay, go ahead. I'm waiting on you. He didn't say a word. And my friend, they stood on their own without, well, they didn't know. They said, if our God be help us, fine. If he don't, fine. They took that faith without any courage from God. And guess what? God honored their faith. Showed up in their faith. Sometimes God lets you make that choice you own. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you have to make that step of faith where God's, where God's really speaking to your heart or not. You know, you just got to take that step of faith. Amen? Come on now. Let me just say this in passing. You don't have to pray where you go to church or not. I'm going to pray where I got to go. I'm about service now. You don't have to pray. Don't never get down and pray. Say, Lord, you want me to go to church Sunday? The will strike you dead. Amen? The Word of God just said, forsake not this evening. You don't have to pray about that. You just come. Amen? I don't, want to go. I don't want to go because of this or that. Sometimes it's been dry. It's been dead. Hey, you're going to have them times. But you just keep on coming, keep on believing. Out there standing somewhere in the shadows, the Lord will manifest himself. I thought about, I thought about Job. What about old Job? All the things that God put Job through, all the hardships and difficulties. But you know what Job said? Job said in Job chapter 23, he said, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. Backwards, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Job said, I've looked to the front. I look behind me. I look to the left. Look left. I can't find God. God's not manifesting himself, but I'm not going to change. I'm just going to keep believing God. I'm going to keep serving God. I'm going to keep on standing for God. He knoweth the way that I take. I may not know where he's at, but he knows where I'm at. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes God just lets us walk along. It's kind of like raising kids, you know, when they get a little big, you know, you want, you know, as soon as they're born, everybody won't know when they're going to walk. And when they start walking, you know, we used to stand ours up against the wall. I used to say, I'd say, my boy's going to be walking before he's nine months old. And Whitney was. And uh, now he's still walking, still talking. Don't never stop, don't never shut up. Amen. But I used to stand him up against the wall, and I'd get back, and I'd say, all right, come on. Come on to that, you know. And they'd take a step or lean forward, bam, it hit the floor. And Kate said, they're too young. I said, no, not my boys, they're going to walk. You know, and I'd keep working with them, work with them, and they'd finally start walking. Then when they started walking all over the house, I'd think, what did I do that for him? <laughs> You couldn't keep up with them in, you know. We wanted them to walk when they started walking. They think, man, don't take that away from them, amen. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, God lets us kind of leans us up against the wall and kind of lets us make that step on our own, amen. Kind of lets us walk along by ourselves a little bit. And, and I remember, I think it was Kevin. I think it was Kevin. He, he uh, we had a hard time getting him to walk. We'd try to get him to walk, and he just sat down. You know, I'd say, come on, take a step. He just sat down on the floor, and, and he wouldn't do it. And you know what? We just left it alone. I said, just leave him alone. I said, he'll walk when he wants to walk. You know what we found out, brother mine? He got in there, he'd pull himself up. We was in another room. But we, I looked in there, and I said, come here. And we, we went in there, and he, he'd pull himself, pull himself up on the, on the coffee table. You know what to do? He'd, he'd take a step around and around the coffee table. He'd take around, and frankly, he'd, he'd let go, you know, try to take a step or two. And I told Kay, I said, here we are encouraging him. Here we are trying to hip him. We're there to catch him. 
captive, but he's doing it on his own. I said, just leave him alone. Next thing I know, Brother George, here he come, uh, walking across the floor. Me and her both look. Well, wow. You know what? Sometimes God does it that way. My friend, he encourages us, but sometimes he don't encourage us. And he lets us make that step along uh, and make that step of faith. But ain't you glad when he do make that step? He's right there to help us and catch us. My friend, we need that kind of faith. Keep us believing without any encouragement from God. I don't know about you, I don't like that kind. I don't like it when God kind of backs up. <laughs> Amen. You know, it, it's hard, and, and some of you don't have kids and, and grown kids. I looked at all these little kids around here, and, uh, and you know, some of you don't have these teenagers yet. But it's a different world when you have teenagers. It's a different world when they get out on their own. They come, hey, you, somebody said, boy, I got these terrible threes. I think, man, what about the terrible 16s, 17s, and 18s, amen? <laughs> man, that, that's why I'm high ball head, amen? That caused you to pull the, boy, the hair out of your head. Brother Brian, I know you had trouble with kids. All your hair's gone, amen? But listen, you know what? We look at them. You know what we say, and I say this all the time. We say, I ain't helping them no more. I ain't encouraging them no more. I ain't doing nothing no more. Let them learn. Let them learn, amen? We got Lexi. Finally got Lexi's apartment. And thank you for praying for her and keep praying. She's not, she's not always there, but she's a long way from where she was. Got in a little trailer. And you know what she thinks? Said, Everything's okay. I can handle everything now. That's okay. I said, okay, just back up. I said, she ain't got her first power bill yet. I said, when she gets that first power bill, it's going to like wham, you know. <laughs> I said, let her learn what a power bill is. Amen. You know what? Sometimes uh, it's step good to just step back. Well, you know, sometimes God does that in our life. He just steps. I think sometimes, I think sometimes God just steps back in our churches sometimes. I think he just steps back. When we get to thinking we don't need him, <laughs> we can have service without him. Amen? And we, he just steps back and says, okay, do it on your own. Amen? Boy, I'll tell you what, sometimes, but you know what? You don't just keep on praying. You keep on studying. You keep on believing God. Amen. Then all of that, not only do we need the kind of faith to keep us believing without any curse from others, without any curse from God, but we need the kind of faith that keeps us believing without a previous experience. Without a previous experience. You say, what do you mean, preacher? You know, God don't always work the same way all the time. Somebody say, well, God done it this way last time, and we're looking for him to do it the same way. He may not do it the same way. Sometimes God sends revival to the church, and sometimes, you know, we say, we're sitting around waiting for that to happen again. And it may not happen again. God may send revival in another direction. I, sometimes we're quick to judge. Well, I ain't never seen that before. Well, that don't mean it ain't real. That don't mean it ain't God just because you ain't seen it before. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? No, we, we, and we're bad about that. We got to have the same. It's got to happen the same way every time. I thought, about, I thought about in Mark chapter number 2 when that guy was laying over on that bed and those four wives went over and picked him up took him up there and he got up part of the door was full he could the crowd was so big they couldn't get him in the door had been most people that just said hey we've done the best we can for you this left him laying there you know what they went up on top tore the roof off yeah, amen. tore the roof off Jesus down there teaching they tore the roof off can you imagine Jesus teaching them people sitting there thinking well what's going on up there and all of a sudden, it will be like here at the church. All of a sudden, you know, it's packed out. Can't nobody get in. And all of a sudden, my friend, the shingles is flying off and everything. And all of a sudden, there's a hole comes. Somebody lets somebody down. That's the way it happened. And here they let Jesus down there. And when they got Jesus down there, they're sitting there looking out there. And they laid him down on his feet. And my friend, you know what? Their faith, their faith. Nobody ever, as far as I know in this Bible, my friend, before or since, ever tore a roof off to get somebody to Jesus. But they did that day. They could have said, wait, well, nobody ever tore a roof off before. Uh, there ain't no other church tore the roof off. Ain't nobody else. You know what? That boy that went home helpless. He went home not healed. Uh, my friend, without a previous experience, without ever seeing anybody else do it, they tore the roof off and let him down. And he, la he they let him down on the bed, but he picked his bed up and walked out of there. Right. You know what God said? He said when he saw their faith. <laughs> Amen. You know what some of y'all have been worried about? Who's going to fix that roof? Boy, that's going to cost us. <laughs> It'd be worth tearing the roof off if somebody gets saved. Yeah, yeah we'd be sitting around. I'll tell you what, brother, if Brian done that, you know, he got together with three, four, you got to the roof off, let somebody down. Everybody said, I'll tell you what, he needs to move on. Let him fix it himself. Let him pay it. They would, they'd forget about what happened. Huh? 
But you know what? Without a, without a, without a proof's experience, them old boys just tear. I think about this. I think about Noah. God come to Noah back in the Genesis. God come to Noah and he said, Noah, build an ark. Noah said, what's an ark? Never had been an ark before. Nobody else had one. There wasn't a church in town had one. There wasn't nobody had an ark. He said, build an ark. God said, what? Noah said, what's an ark? God told him, gave him the blueprint. What I need it for? It's going to rain. What's rain? Yeah. Never had rain before. <laughs> Come on now. Some of y'all looking funny. Amen. Yeah. Build an ark. What's an ark? It's going to rain. What's rain? Amen. If you read in Hebrews, the Bible says, by faith, by faith, that Noah being warned of God of what? Things not seen as yet. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteous. If that had been most people, they'd have said, ain't no way. Nobody else has got an ark and nobody else has heard of rain. And guess what? Your family would have drowned like the rest of them. Yeah. Amen. But without a previous experience, without ever having a... Can you, can you imagine somebody come along and say, hey, know what are you doing? I'm building an ark. Now, what's an ark? Well, God said it was this. and showed them the blueprint. Well, what do you need that ark for? They said, well, it's going to rain. Forty days. They said, what's rain? It ain't never rain. They probably walked over and said, poor, poor old Noah's going to say now. Poor old Noah's lost it. I'll tell you, when them rain dropped began to fall, and the door was shut and judgment began to fall, they probably wished they'd have, they'd have got in there and joined up with Noah. Amen. I'll tell you what, sometimes you need the kind of faith where has anybody ever seen it before or not. That's just what you did. Amen. God honored it. He saved him. He saved his household. God honored that step of faith. What do you mean you know it? What about Abraham and Sarah? Yeah. God told Abraham, said, you're going to have a baby. Abraham, go and help me out. Was he 99? Yep. He's 99 years old. Only one ever heard of 99. You're a man and woman all having babies is inquire. Amen. Can you imagine coming along? And, and Jordan, how to help me? Uh, Noah, uh, uh, Abraham was holding Sarah. Well, Sarah was 90, wasn't she? Uh, 80. Sarah was 80. And uh, he said, can you imagine coming along? And Abraham, can you imagine going home and tell, tell Sarah, Sarah, guess what? You're going to have a baby. <laughs> she said, I'm 80 years old. I don't care. God said you're going to have a baby. Amen. Come on now. Can't you imagine? Can't you imagine? This is just a little illustration. Can't you imagine? Uh, uh, Sarah's up there, and, and she's up there in the house, and somebody come by and see her. She's got a piece of cloth, Brother Mike, and she's sitting there sewing on a piece of cloth, and she's just sewing away and working away. And they said, Sarah, what you, what are you making? Making booties. <laughs> what for? And you heard? I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to have a baby. And they said, well, Sarah, you're 80 years old. I don't care. God's had it. We're getting ready for it. Amen. Can't you imagine they leave thinking, poor old Sarah, come off a deep end, amen? And they come up there, and here comes, old, here comes Abraham out of the wood. He's a dragging a big old tree up through there. My friend, they look at him and said, Abraham, you better get up there and check on Sarah. They said, what's wrong with her? He said, she's up there making booze. He said, she's going to have a baby. He said, yep, I'm the daddy, amen? And my friend, listen, I'm getting this wood, going to make a baby crib or whatever, right? And my friend, you know what? That unbelieving crowd didn't believe him. My friend, but you know what? Without an previous experience, without even that ever happened before, wouldn't you like to have been around there about nine months later? Uh, would you like to have been around there about nine months later had a little get together and here comes Sarah walking in and said look at here I told you I told you look at here look at him my friend that's what God told hey, y'all didn't believe me God said it I'll tell you we need that kind of faith if we ever need it before or not that we'll believe God if God said it do it my daddy used to say if God tells you to jump through that wall it's your place to jump and God's place to make a hole but you better make sure God said jump. <laughs> Amen. What about, hey, let me give you one more. What about Joshua? I know I'm preaching a long time. Y'all didn't sing much, so I can preach a long time. Amen. What about Joshua? Can you imagine? Imagine this. God said, Joshua, I'm tired of these walls down. <laughs> and the Joshua said, well, what contractor can we call? God said, no, no. said, I want you to walk around. If you read this, if you read this carefully, you know, I hear preachers preach the whole nation of Israel walked around. Then they would have never got it done. It wasn't the whole nation of Israel. It was a, it was a, a group, priests and things like that. They walked around. 
and the other, other people gathered around. But you know what? Can you imagine? Can you imagine, Brother Mike? Now, listen, if I'm, if I'm, I'm out here and, and going to tie the walls down at this church, Brother Doug called and said, Brother Mike, we want to build a new church. We need to tie the walls down. Can you handle that? I said, yeah, I can handle it. And I come up here, and Brother Mike, you come by. And I'm walking, <laughs> walking around the walls, you know, walking around. And you come by and say, Brother Mike, what, what are you doing up here? I'm tying these walls down. <laughs> How are you going to do it, Brother Mike? Well, I'm going to walk around every day. Help me out. Jordan, it was six times or seven times a day. Amen. Uh, once today for seven days. That's the way it was. Once today. And ever for seven days I'm walking around. And Brother, Brother Mike just on purpose comes by about lunchtime to see if I'm here. Huh? And he goes home to tells whatever her name is. He says, but the Mike lost it up there. But the Mike lost it. What's wrong with him? <laughs> he's up there walking around around the wall, said he's going to tear the wall down. Huh? That's what he told Joshua one time a day. Walk around. Seventh day. Come by. Brother Mike said, why are you doing it? I'm, well, I'm going to do seven days. I'm going to do seven times a day, and the Lord's going to fall him down. Amen. Tell you what he'd do. He'd park his little old truck back over there and just see what's going to happen. But can't you imagine, boy, they walk around one time, two times. Can't you imagine? Now, this is just a little illustration I hear. Can't you imagine them Jerichoites? <laughs> hey, hold on. What are you doing, Joshua? I'm tired of them walls down. You better move. They lived in them walls. You better call you ho. I fixed the tear down. Joshua, we live in these walls. These walls are thick. I don't care. God told me what to do. Can't you imagine, my friend, that last day, my friend, they're about halfway around on the seventh round. <laughs> and all of a sudden, old Josh said, pass it back. Pass word back. Tell him trumpet players to lick her lips. <laughs> Tell him shouters to get a good breath. We're fixing to knock her down. <laughs> you don't believe this? Read your Bible. <laughs> Boy, that seventh time, old Josh said, oh, blow them trumpets. They start blowing them trumpets, and then the shouters begin to shout, and them old walls begin to tremble, and the Bible said it fell down so good there wasn't one stone on top of another stone. Right. Nobody ever seen a wall tore down like that before, it says, but God done it because Joshua had faith that God said, do it that way. <laughs> we need the kind of faith to keep us believe without it. Without a previous experience, we don't. It, God, we don't always have to have it the same way every time. Come on now, help me out, huh? Then let me give you something. Else. We need. We need the kind of faith that keeps us believing without a public demonstration. You say we're talking about preacher. You know we're living a day to day where everything's got to be big. I told one preacher a while back. He said, "You know, brother Mike said said uh, we go to these count meetings. And said they shout and everything. And it's good." But he said, "I come home and said." He said, we have good services, you know, and people praise the Lord a little bit. But he said, we have all them, all them just slow services. You know, I told him, I said, you know what, some of the best services you'll ever have is some of them where nobody shouted, nobody testified, just good good singing and good preaching and just a good slow rain. That's, that gets in the ground. Them gully washers don't get in the ground. Them little slow rains, we're just slow, it rains all evening, sometimes all night. I used to hear them all the time and say, now that rain's getting in the ground. Sometimes the best service you ever have is quiet service, and I'm not against shouting. But some preachers think if you don't shout every service, you ain't have no meat. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I like to have my grandkids on task, and I like to turn flips and have a good time. And I play with them and dance with them and everything else. We just have a blast. But sometimes I just want to sit down and be quiet. Amen. And just sit there and enjoy each other and talk. You know what? Every time you come to church, you can't shout it out. Did you know most times you shout it out, and I'm not against shouting, but God tells you, shout, shout. But you know something, most times when you shout, when you get outside and ask you, Brother Brian, what did you shout about? He said, I don't know. <laughs> Amen. How did you shout? And run the house and have a good time. What were you doing it for? I don't remember. Just hit me at that time. But you get a good slow rain, good preaching, you go out of here and you can remember something. Right. Amen. I'm not against shouting. Don't, don't think I am. But you know what? Sometimes it ain't in the big things. Sometimes it's that little thing. You remember over there when, when where was it, Elijah? Elijah, the, the, the whirlwind came. <laughs> Everything came. It wasn't in the whirlwind. It wasn't in all this stuff. And all of a sudden, God spoke in a still, small voice. And Elijah said, that's him. <laughs> you know, sometimes you know, we, we think we got to, you know, the centurion served in Matthew chapter 8. You know what he did? He came down and said, Lord, would you, would you, you what was his son? Help my son. Touch my son, you know. Died, and and the Lord 
said, okay, we'll go. He said, no, Lord. He said, I'm a, I'm a man in authority. He said, I say to this and do this and that and do that. He said, just speak the word on me. See, it would have been a big thing. Jesus come to my house. Jesus come. And Jesus done this. It would have been a big old thing if Jesus went to his house. He said, I don't need you to go to my house. I ain't interested in the big deal. I just want my boy touched. <laughs> and Jesus said, great is thy faith. I've never seen so much faith. Amen. And God, and when that man went home, he said, hey, they come running out there and said, your boy's touched. Yeah. And he got to thinking, boy, that's about the same hour that he spoke to the Lord. See, sometimes, you know, we need that kind of faith. We keep believing without a public demonstration, without a big blowout. Come on now, help me out. Huh? Naaman, Naaman, you remember, uh, Naaman had leprosy. And uh, he wanted to get touched. He said, go down there. And the little maid, had a little old maid in there. She said, would to God. Would to God. That my master knowed the prophet, the man of God. And he went and told, sent for the man of God. And the man of God wouldn't even come. He said, go down there and get baptized in, in, in a certain, uh, what was Jordan? Jordan River. He said, go down there and get baptized in the Jordan River. And he wouldn't do it. He said, I ain't going down there. Jordan dirty. I ain't going down there. And one of them looked at him and said, hey, if he told you to go down there in the big Nile River, if he even told you to go over here in this big other something, if he'd go over and told you to, to go over here in this big river and over here, wouldn't you have done it? Yeah. He said, well, what don't you do what he said? And he went over there, and my friend went down to that Nile, or the Jordan River, and he came out cleansed. Been a big deal, big, big blowout if he'd went the other way. Amen. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we don't need a big public demonstration. Amen. The Shulamite woman. In 2 Kings, was it, chapter 4, she had a, a chamber built for the man of God. She built a chamber on her house for the man of God. She had a bed and a lamp, a chair, a table sitting in there. The man of God would come by, check in, and refresh himself. I know some people has got little, put a little apartments on the side of their house for the men of God that come, missionaries that come stay. You know what? Them's the happiest people you ever see. You know why? They're always taking care of the man of God man of God comes to their house and stays. You know what? That's happened to shoot him out woman. And they ain't go, boy, she was good to him. You know what? The man of God, Elijah said, what can I do for you? And the servant said, well, she's without child. And Elijah looks at this time next year, this time of season, your, your season said, you'll bring forth a son. And she said, don't be joking with me. Don't be, don't be telling me something like that. But you know what? The next time, my friend, they saw her, she had a son. Amen. My friend, she could have she could have made a big deal out of that. But you know what she did? She just had that son, went right on living. Never didn't make a big deal out of it. She didn't call the film association, have them make a film out of it. She didn't put it on CNN. <laughs> she just had the baby and believed God. Come on now. <laughs> it's kinda like it's kinda like Facebook, you know. Amen. Everybody gotta tell you what you're doing, like we're really interested. You know, I'm at Walmart. You know, who cares? You know, everything they do. You know. Come on, Whew, did you feel that? Hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Do that if you want to. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I really, truly, I don't want everybody to know where I'm at. But you know what? It's sensationalism. And meetings. You go to these meetings sometimes, some of these big meetings. And it's, it's sensationalism. they got to, everything's got to be big, you know. Come on. Don't die on me. I remember meeting a few years ago, the preacher said he was going to have a, a week's meeting, just a week's meeting. And he called the preachers together in the area and said, we're going to have a week's meeting, two-week meeting, I believe it was. And he said, it's going to cost $70,000 to put this meeting on. Wow. I'm thinking. <laughs> and he put a tent up, you know, and, and had all this big stuff, had big singers in, big-time preachers in and everything, you know. And I thought, man, we used to drag a tent around all the time, and we'd go broke. Never has cost over two or three hundred dollars to throw an old tent up and preach a week or two. Seventy thousand. Can you imagine seventy thousand dollars? And them crazy pastors jumped in there and gave a thousand dollars apiece. And they blowed it all out. And the man doing the preaching left with about thirty thousand in his pocket. Come on now. Sensationalism. Everything's got to be big. Come on now. Don't tell me. Everything's got to be big. It's got to be blown up. Huh? Come on now, help me. I know some preachers like that. They got, they got to preach their night. They got to have their night. I'm, I'm about eight. This ain't nothing to do with you. I'm about half aggravated with some of these meetings. These preachers come in. They want me to come stay all week. 
I told Kay, I said, they don't care if we're here or not. They just like to have some old man sitting around here. <laughs> Somebody's been preaching a long time, been in this thing a long time. I had to have the old man of God sitting back there, you know. <laughs> and I'm not against that. But them other guys, they show up the night they preach and they leave, get their offering and leave and they're gone. <laughs> One preacher, I told him, I said, you still here? He said, yeah, you got my offering, yeah. <laughs> I said, man, if I get ready to leave, I can leave. They can mail it mine. <laughs> Amen. You know what? They got to be seen. You can, you can see them. Come walking in like I'm here. <laughs> oh, Lord, God help me. I'm glad this is on tape. Maybe somebody hear it. Amen. You know what they do? They come in and pop. My daddy used to call them popcorn preachers. They pop in, pop off, and pop out. Amen. I mean, they just got to do their thing. They ain't interested in nobody else's. Uh, these preachers, they aggravate me. They'll call me when we come preach for them, Brother Mike. And, and you know what they'll say? Now, Brother Mike, we start at 11 o'clock. I said, don't you have Sunday school? They said, yeah, you have, we have Sunday school, but you don't have to come. I said, listen, if you start at 9 o'clock, we'll be there at 9 o'clock. If you start at 10, we'll be there at 10. If you start at 11, we'll be there at 11. I want to get in on the whole thing. I'm not interested in half a meal. I go to Sunday school. I mean, preachers, well, they feel like they're too important. They don't listen to what Jordan got to say. Now, they don't listen to what some other Sunday school teacher. Now, don't get quiet on me now. Amen. Amen. Uh, all they're interested in is pop it off. <laughs> Here I am. You ain't have a meeting without me. <laughs> oh, Mama, help me get off of this. Amen. You ain't have a meeting without me. I'm the important one. Uh, what about that Sunday school teacher that's prayed and studied all week? Probably prayed and studied more than they have. Amen. Right. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm going to be in trouble with the brethren. Amen. Uh, but I, I, we need that kind of thing. Without a previous experience, we don't have to be seen. We don't have to be seen. Some of the best meetings and some of the best Christians I know, they're hidden. I remember preaching a meeting one time. I was in a meeting. Boy, God was a blessing. God was a blessing. God was a moving. I mean, every night, Brother Josh, you could feel the God moving in that place. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm over there trying to pray, but in the motel, but I wouldn't really, you know, I mean, it, it would, I was praying and praying to God to help us. But somebody, somebody was getting a hold of God. Every night, the singers would blow it out. I'd preach myself to death. People getting saved, getting right. I'm thinking, what in the world's going on? At the end of the meeting, the pastor told me, he said, Brother Mike, I guess you wondered what's going on. He said, nobody knows this. He said, we had a, we had a fellow in another church come on and help us in the meeting. And said he was in the baptistry every night. From the time service started till it was over, he prayed, laid flat in the baptistry and prayed that the Holy Ghost would come. I said, what's his name? He said, his name's not important. I just want you to know there was a man praying every night laying in the baptistry. Nobody, he never gave his name. He said, don't give him a name. I'm not doing it for show. But he laid there every night. God sent revival. He Nobody never knowed who he was. He didn't even know he was in there. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's what the kind of faith I'm talking. That you don't have to be saved. You just know God put something in your heart. Right. Yeah. If you don't never get no recognition, I've got to quit. Hey, we need that kind of faith. Keep believing without encouragement from others, without encouragement from God, without a proof experience, without a public demonstration. Last of all, we need that kind of faith to keep us believing with patience. Right. Sometimes we pray, but we don't have enough patience to wait on God to move. Yeah, right. Sometimes we want somebody to get safe so bad, we don't wait. We ain't got enough patience to wait on the Holy Ghost to get them gun to conviction. Amen. We got to get a profession out of them, you know. We got to get them to say the sinner's prayer. Sometimes we don't have patience to wait on revival. Sometimes we don't have patience to wait on God to work and move in our life. God don't work just because you say so. Amen? Amen. God's not like your wife. You have to jump when she speaks. She's, God's not like that. Come on now. Y'all catch that about midnight. Amen? God's like that. God works on his own schedule. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to wait. Patiently wait on the Lord. Patiently wait for God to work. And God to move. We need that kind of faith. You know, sometimes if, if you ain't careful, sometimes, especially preachers, and I, man, I've been on preachers bad tonight myself. Even. But sometimes, you know, if something ain't going, we try to make something happen. We knew who to call on, saying. We knew who to call on to testify real big or pray real long. <laughs> Come on.
Come on now. We know. We know how to get that thing going. Yeah. Oh, Brother Buster Satan, one of my precious preacher friends in heaven now. We preached a lot of meetings together. If he didn't really want to preach that night, Brother Josh, and they had singers. I remember the Fitch family. You ever remember the Fitch family? They used to sing, and they'd sing a lot of our meetings, and they could sing. And if he got up there and sang, and his brother, brother Buster didn't really want to preach that night, you know what he'd do? He'd sing a song. If it hit a little bit, he'd go, that meant sing it again. <laughs> and they'd sing two or three times, blow it out, shout, and he'd get up and say, boy, we've had a good time. We'll come back tomorrow night. Get that thing going. You know what? He got it going. Yeah. Amen? He worked that thing up. Amen? Come on now. We've been in it long enough. No, we know how to work it up. That don't mean God's here. But sometimes you just got to patiently wait on God. I remember, I ran that pup told this, but when I was passionate at Gillette, went in there one Sunday morning, and uh, and the choir got up and sang. And while they're singing, and they, when they came down, I'm sitting on the front seat. I just went up and made announcements and everything. I started to get up, and the Holy Ghost said, sit there. Don't move. I just sat there. Everybody else went and sat down. My wife always sat here where, where uh, baby mama is. <laughs> she leaned up there and she said, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm all right. Choir's down. Like I didn't know it. <laughs> I just sat there. Quiet. I mean, he got quiet. <laughs> I started to get up and Holy Ghost said, don't move. I just sat there. Everybody was looking. Everybody's wondering, what's wrong with the preacher? And after about 15 minutes, I heard somebody go, <laughs> heard cry. Here they come to the altar, got in the altar. Directly I heard somebody else, here they come, got in the altar. Here comes some more, little by little. They go in the altar, get up going, here comes some more. I started to get up and say something, and the Holy Ghost said, don't move. I just sat there. God kept moving, people kept coming. People got hugging necks in the altar, getting right with each other and everything. I'm just sitting over there, had no clue what's going on. All I know is God's moving. God, and, and I thought it's called on somebody to sing. My piano player, my piano player, she was very well trained. When when the preacher preached or when I got through preaching, and I'd say, bow your head. The other preacher bow your head. You know what she done? She looked straight at me. She'd always look straight at me. Here's a good lesson. Always look straight at me. You know what? She'd say, and, I, and I'd do like this, and, you know, point her on, or she'd, she wouldn't move till I say so. You know, and I, I started to look over and tell her to go play. And the Holy Ghost said, just be still, don't move. They emptied the altar three or four times, Brother Brian. After a while, they all went to the altar and everything got quiet. And the Holy Ghost said, okay, you can send them home. I got up and I said, it's over. See you tonight, 6 o'clock. We left. One of the best services we ever had. You can talk to people at Gilead right now. They say, what, you ever, what kind of service? Oh, it serves it. They say, yeah, I remember one time. Brother Mike never got off the pier. You know why we patiently waited on God to move? We need to get a faith. Let's patiently wait on the Lord to move. You know what? That's what happened. That's what happened to, to Columbus. If you read about Columbus, he looked every day. He looked at his chart. He didn't see no land. He'd look. And then his book, he'd write, sailed on. <laughs> Next day, he'd look. You get his book, you can read it and see it. And he'd write on his chart, didn't see no land, but sailed on. Sailed on, patiently just kept sailing. One day, he spotted land. Boy, they started to read, land ahead. They started rejoicing. They could have turned back. They could have got weary. But patiently, they waited. And we live in this country now that he patiently waited to discover for us. Sometimes the best things comes when we wait on God. Amen? Wait on the Lord. I, I think about I think about this. I've I've, I've given this uh, illustration so many times. Probably here uh, so, so many times. Some of you can tell it yourself, but uh, this is one of my one of my favorite illustrations. I found this in a book, and it told about it told about uh, uh, a high school, and they was going to have a track run, and a little old boy had had uh, run the mile, made his brags at the state meet. He was going to win the win the mile run. He's going to run a mile and win it. Break the state record. And said because of all the anticipation and all the excitement about this boy, possibility breaking the state record. Said the crowd came. They'd come from everywhere. Stands was full. to Watch this little boy run. And said when they got ready to run the mile, and said they, they uh, lined up down there, and that little boy done his hands like this at the crowd, and they all screamed and hollered. 
in hopes that he would break that record. He said the, and the announcer said he looked down the line, and on the far end of that line, there was a little old farm boy, a little holler-chested humpback farm boy down on the end. He said the announcer said to himself, what in the world is he doing in this race? He ain't no runner. And said they shot the guns, in the run, and the runners began to run. And said that boy that made his brags, he lapped them all. Said, in fact, when the race was over, he went across the finish line. He had broke the state record. The crowd screamed and hollered and cheered. And said they started putting the hurlers out for the next race. And the announcer looked down and said, get the hurlers off. Said, the race ain't over. Said, he looked down, here come that little holler-chested, humpback farm-looking boy come running down the track. Race was over, but here he come. He come over and he fell with exhaustion over the finish line. They picked him up, got him settled down, and said, "Son, said why didn't you quit? Said you couldn't win. Said it was over. Why didn't you quit?" He said, "I didn't come here to quit." He said, "Our school, another boy was supposed to run this race. He got sick. They asked me to come run a mile. Said I wasn't here to win. I wasn't here to lose. I was here to run my mile." <laughs> he said, "Mission accomplished." You know, we're not in this thing to win and lose. We're just in this thing to run our race with patience. Look at under Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. God, you know, the Matthew said, the Bible said the disciples, after Jesus spoke and everything, you know what they said? Lord, increase our faith. You know, that's a good prayer we could pray tonight from here on. Lord, increase our faith. Give me that faith that don't matter who quits, I just keep going. Give me that faith, God, when you're not really speaking blessing, I'll just keep on going. Give me that faith, Lord, if I've never seen what you want me to do before, I'll do it by faith. Give me that faith, I, if I've ever seen or not seen, I'll just keep on believing God. Give me that, God, God, give me that faith that with patience, that I just patiently wait on my prayers to be answered. I patiently wait for you to work in the midst of our services, and God, increase our faith. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.